Hello everybody and welcome to the final Mo Creatures video. This is going to be documenting the breeding and training, uh, taming of the Mo Creatures horses. There are several varieties and I will go into my stable here to show you guys. Each one has a different speed and a different frequency of spawn. So this is... Oh, let me get in here. This is the light, the light colored horse. And they are most common and they are the slowest. Um, I think the other ones are down here. This is the dark horse, they're second. So they spawn have the sa similar spawning rate as the light ones and they're a little bit faster. In third, there are the dark horses or black ones. And then you go to the unicorns. They are faster than all the other ones, like the dark ones and the brown ones. And they spawn... it's kind of uncommon. And then you have a 1% spawn rate of a wild pegasus. And I will show you guys how they fly in a bit. And then there are three horses you can only get through breeding. And that is the pack horse which you can actually give its own inv inventory. The... well, you can breed for the Pegasus, too. Um, the Black Pegasus, which is in here. You can breed to get him. He's the fastest. And then Nightmare, which is over here in the breeding shed. That's actually what they call this horse. He's the one back there. So he's kind of like a red unicorn. And he has some pretty interesting characteristics, too. So, um, there is a special way you have to store your horses. Um, their AI is programmed so that they tend to wander. So if you want to keep track of your horses, you have to put them in a stable of some sort. Um... They can glitch through small openings, so you do have to, like, even, even this tiny little gap between the fence here and the door causes a glitch sometimes, and they'll actually be wandering around in the aisle here. But, this is normally how I decide to store the horses. There are, you have to have a double door, and the door has to be three blocks high if you want to ride through it, because the horse itself is two blocks, and then once you get on it, it turns into three blocks high. So, it has to be double doors. And they do jump on their own, so I always have three blocks high for the stall walls. And when you're breeding a horse, they have to be eight blocks away from the player and other horses. So that's why I've built a separate little shed over here as the breeding shed. Whoops. No, don't get out the door. To get on a horse, you right click. To get off a horse, you hit shift. It's pretty simple. Um, taming. To tame a horse, you just need a saddle, a horse saddle. And you need um, apples. There's a hole in my roof. If you have wheat or sugar lumps, that works too, but you need quite a few sugar lumps and quite a few pieces of wheat to be able to tame a horse, where if you use an apple, it's instant. And then you can just right-click on them with an apple, and you have the choice to change their name, or you can do it with a medallion as well. If they get this green bar, is their health bar, so they can get fall damage just as much as the player can, so you have to feed them to give them their health back. To breed them, you need two pumpkins, and I have a texture pack on right now, so my pumpkins look really weird. But you just right-click, you feed them the pumpkin, and it takes five minutes or half a, mo or half a Minecraft day, and you just leave them in there. The horses have to be within four spaces of each other, and eight spaces away from everyone else. And they will go about that. So in the meantime, I will show you guys 
what the genetic value on the mole creatures would be. Alright, so rule one of horse breeding is that you need to have a certain total genetic value to be able to breed for a certain type of mole creature's horse. So, for example, the Pegasus has a total genetic value of 10, which means you need two horses to combine with their genetic value, so the top number, to equal 10. So naturally, you would think that Well, you need, because <clears throat> that's 10, so you need, so obviously two Pegasus will give you a Pegasus, because 5 plus 5 is 10. But you need other horses here to make you a Pegasus. So, the way I do it, I always breed a pack horse with a dark horse. Oh, wait, no man. Pack horse with a unicorn, sorry. So get a Pegasus, because that's genetic value 6. A unicorn is 4, so 6 plus 4 is 10. Um, so yeah, the total genetic value of the light horse and brown horse are 0. So if you want a light horse, brown horse, or dark horse, it's just better off finding one in the wild than trying to breed for one, because it'll be all random and using the genetic value, so GV, you can add them together to get any total genetic value of the four horses at the end here that need to be bred for. So, I already, to help you guys, I made these signs, and this shows you what I have done to make certain horses. So, to make a pack horse, I combine a unicorn and a black horse and you get a pack horse. And then using that pack horse, I breed it with a different dark horse to get a nightmare. And then a second unicorn plus a second pack horse gets a pegasus. And combining a pegasus and a nightmare will give you a black pegasus. But unless you have the easy horse breeding setting on from the global mod settings, it'll be at random, so you won't always get that particular thing. So, ah. so here's a unicorn, so unicorn plus dark horse equals pack horse, and the pack horses are pretty cool, let me show you why. I need a shovel, stone shovel, a wooden shovel, that would probably work. So, when a pack horse is a baby, you can tame it, and if you right-click on it with a chest in your hand, it will give the pack horse a pair of satchels like this. And if you have a shovel, obviously not that kind of shovel. Hmm, I need a stone shovel. Okay, so a stone shovel, when you're holding a stone shovel in your hand, you right click on the pack horse, <clears throat> and it opens up their satchel. So this is horse chest, so psh, I'm going to make it carry some snowballs. Da -da. <clears throat> so you can be riding around, and even if you're on the horse, oh, no, you have to be off the horse to be able to open the satchels. Okay. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. That helps if you're wandering around. So the genetic value of a unicorn is 4. Genetic value of a uh, dark horse is 3, so 4 plus 3 is 7, and that's the genetic value <clears throat> you need to have combined between the two horses in order to get a pack horse. And they have to be fully grown to be able to put a saddle on them, so... Alright, so with any kind of pegasus, I'm just going to take the white one, because it's easier to demonstrate without the horn being in the way.
So you just go anywhere and hit the spacebar and you can fly. Um, it takes a little bit to land back on the ground again because that's to prevent fall damage. Even if you're in creative mode, if you hit the shift bar, you will dismount your horse and fall and your horse will just casually land back on the ground. So obviously if you're in survival mode and you're flying, and you slowly land, you're not going to get any fall damage. But if I suddenly dismount, there, I get some fall damage. So that's not really that graceful. And it's not letting me back on my horse. There we go. Okay, so that's the Pegasus. I will show you the Nightmare now. Okay, so once you're on your fun. Nightmare, I would advise, if you're just testing this out, to pick a very far away spot from any of your buildings, especially if they're made of wood, if you want to keep them. So I'm just going to climb all the way up here to the snow biome. It's really easy to get your horse to jump. You just obviously hit the space bar. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, oops, where there are not any trees. Okay, so once you're on your nightmare, if you have redstone in your hand, you can feed your horse. Oh, you have to be off your horse. Feed him redstone. Nom 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 nom. And you get back on him. Oops, come here. Nope, wrong button. And you ride him around, and he lights the world on fire. So obviously this can get pretty destructive. I mean, it's good if you're wanting to clear an area of forest. Uh, what it doesn't help with is if you're actually in survival mode, it lights you on fire too. But it doesn't cause you that much damage, but it does hurt you. So it's best if you're going to play around with this, to play around with it in creative mode. And he will keep lighting everything on fire until he eventually wears, like, until he, that redstone that you fed him wears off. And I actually fed him four redstone, so he's going to be on fire for a little while. So I'm going to have to put him, oh, okay, it doesn't actually last that long. Okay, he's done now. However, everything stays on fire for a little bit. So I'm just going to put him back in the stable now, before anything else gets lit on fire. They will drown if you keep them in water for a certain length of time, so it's fine if you're just using like a waterfall to go through or to help lower you to the ground quicker, but it definitely hurts you if you stay in there very long. Alright. Alright, so I accidentally left these guys in here for a little bit longer than half a Minecraft day, so my Black Pegasus is fully grown now. But if you combine a Nightmare with a regular Pegasus, you will get a Black Pegasus, which is essentially a unicorn with wings, because it combines the Nightmare and the Pegasus. So I'm just going to hop on the white Pegasus here. If I can get out the door... Oh, my black Pegasus is walking away! Okay, so I need to give him a saddle, give him an apple, hey, come back, come back, come here, um, there we go, just so he can't despawn on me. So when you're on a Pegasus, what